tracks. They want you to think that reclaiming the land has caused massive starvation, when it hasn't. The sanctions have hurt Zimbabwe, not land reclamation. And the BBC is not a neutral observer in all this. They are a zealous advocate for the whites. As far as the BBC is concerned, hey, we stole that land fair and square. Now, how is it that they can get away with these lies? Because we, as black people, do not ask about it. This is why the white media will do interviews with the bootlicks and the MDC, but nobody thinks it strange that not one member of Mugabe's government has been interviewed. In fact, W took out sanctions against Mugabe more strident than anything he ever did against Iran or Iraq. Neither Mugabe nor any member of his government, or anyone seeking to advocate on their behalf financially, can enter the U.S. Think about that. Ahmadinejad went to Columbia University and gave a lecture, even though he took Americans hostage in the 1970s. Say, isn't he supposed to be on the no-fly list? The U.S. has removed sanctions against Libya and normalized relations with that country, even though Gaddafi was responsible for the deaths of Americans, the destruction of U.S. airplanes, and numerous acts of terror against the U.S., for which he has neither been punished nor so much as apologized. But Robert Mugabe, who has not committed an act of terror against the U.S., not supported anyone who has, has not even spoken in defense of anyone who has committed terror against the U.S., has sanctions put on him. So why is he on a terror watch list? Why can't he enter the United States? When Mugabe won the last election, the whites realized he was going to finally go ahead and toss them all out. That's why we saw the fake outrage from them last year. They tried to go to the African Union, figuring that because they had created the African Union and had most of its members on strings, that it would be a simple matter to get the poor Africans to denounce Mugabe. And after that, they would get the Africans to authorize the Brits to send in the Marines. Of course, it didn't happen that way. The AU rejected what was an obvious attempt at recolonization. So, the whites went running to the UN instead, figuring they would get their way there. But Mugabe had already shored up his political support on the UN through the alliances he built with China, who, as a permanent member of the UN Security Council, has veto power. And Russia also joined China in vetoing the Brits' plan to move forward with military action against Mugabe. The whites howled and screamed about it. How corrupt the UN is, because one vote is all it takes to derail the whites' well-laid plans. But those same whites have no problem when the U.S. is the only Security Council member to vote against condemning Israel for its violence against the Palestinians, or when the U.S. votes against a resolution condemning racism. Zimbabwe is a small, poor, weak country, but even so, Mugabe has outfought and outthought the Euro clowns every step of the way. It just goes to show, anyone who says you can't beat the whites at their own game never tried. This is why the white media can't get enough of hating the man. To them, he's like O.J. Simpson times a million. Every day they see him, they have to look at a black man who has shown the world that whites can be kicked around, punched around, beat around, thrown off the land they stole, forced to give back the money they robbed the world of, and that if the non-white world bands together, even the U.S. can't do a damn thing about it. It is the single most dangerous example of defiance toward white power that the modern world has ever seen. But most blacks don't even know that it happened. What happened to Africa under white rule was the same thing you see today. A relentless PR war to convince the world the Africans were primitive savages and they'd be better off with whites in charge. They can't force the issue, so they need to use the last bastion of white power, the media, to fool people into coming to that conclusion on their own. This is why they cannot allow Mugabe's people into the country, why no reporters will talk to him, and why they must demonize him day and night. Mugabe represents the greatest threat to white power the world has ever seen in the modern age. He's no Nelson Mandela, no stooge. He's a man. A black man, standing on his own two feet. No, I don't forgive the thousands of lives Mugabe took. 
But as it stands, he is fighting for the right thing now. I wouldn't build him any monuments, nor would I praise him. But it's not Mugabe I care about. It's Africa. So I support what he's doing. Because it's way past time somebody had the guts to. This is why President Obama extended, yes, you heard me right, extended the sanctions W took out against Zimbabwe. That's right. Obama is carrying out the rights orders. And he has no problem letting Zimbabwe's government leaders into the country just so long as they're leaders that the whites approve of. If the whites were really so concerned about electoral fraud and election-related violence in Africa, why haven't they said a word about Kenya? Because at the same time, we saw whites working themselves into a lather because some white troublemakers said their votes didn't get counted. In Nairobi, the British-backed dictator was busy killing over a thousand of his fellow Kenyans and displacing tens of thousands more. Just so you know, even the most outrageous death tolls Mugabe has been accused of in 2008 only came to 130 at most. And that's from the opposition party, who I'm sure had no incentive to lie. All the world press talked about the real massacre going on in Kenya, the real barbarity taking place by the British hand-picked stooge in Nairobi. But for some reason, the BBC didn't hear a word about it. The British government didn't go to the African Union and demand that their hand-picked puppet Kabaki be denounced. And they sure as hell didn't go to the UN either. Two disputed elections, claims of governmental violence in both cases, but one saw the death toll reach astronomical heights, while in the other case the casualties were negligible. Yet who did the whites choose to go after? See, it's never been about land or human rights. Since one of the Euro clowns ever cared about that anyway? It's always been about supporting and maintaining white power. Mugabe has shown the world that even the poorest of nations can overthrow white control if they have leaders committed to it. Every African on the planet needs to be watching this one. Mugabe, regardless of his faults, is showing us the way. And for that, we should support him.